All right, welcome back. This is lecture 23 of Securities Regulation. We are still doing our overview of the IPO of Burger King India Limited. Now, in the last lecture, we had covered till um, our management, uh, history and our management, and this time we'll go ahead with our promoter. Um, a description of the promoter of the company uh, includes um, the shareholding that the promoter has. In this case, the promoter holds 99.39% of, um, of the Indian company, as well as compulsory convertible preference shares. A note that um, the, the compulsory convertible preference shares will be converted on or before filing the red herring prospectus with the registrar of companies. Details of our promoter, when was it incorporated, um, the registered address and the principal activity, who are the directors on the board of the promoter, the shareholding pattern of the promoter, and then comes the details of the promoter of our promoter. Now, this could go up, you know, uh, so we know that Burger King India Limited is a step down subsidiary, uh, a wholly owned subsidiary of a wholly owned subsidiary of FNB Singapore. Um, and again, the same, the same details that you'd have for the promoter of the company, which is QSR Asia. Uh, you'll have the board of directors, the shareholding pattern, and the board, and you, in this case, you'll have the sharehold, the board of directors, and the shareholding pattern of the promoter of the promoter. We don't need to go beyond this, right? So you don't need to disclose shareholding details ad infinitum. So the promoter of the company and the promoter of the promoter, right? Um, there are some self-explanatory negative disclosures that need to be made. Uh, for the promoter, whether there's been any change of control, any other interest uh, in our company apart from being a promoter of the company, um, the interests of the promoter in the property of our company, have they sold us any property, have they leased us any property, um, is there any business interests with the company that is not merely because they are a promoter, so for example, are there any related party transactions uh, between the company and the promoter? Right, any benefit or payments that have been given to the promoter by the company, any dissociation between the promoter and any other company uh, before filing of this draft red heading prospectus, change in control of the company, uh, any guarantees that have been given by the promoter in favor of the company, and if there are any um, major agreements such as a shareholders agreement or a joint venture agreement with the promoter in respect of the company. Now, obviously, you guys will not have access to these kind of agreements for your companies, but do check the articles of association of the, your promoter to see whether there are any special rights that have been given to any third parties in respect for your own company, right? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to describe the relationship between the promoter and the company and whether the promoter has any interests in the company apart from just being a promoter with majority shareholding, right? Um, and that's it. That's pretty much it for uh, the promoter's um, chapter. It's fairly short. Uh, figure out what is regulation 2-1-P of the SEBI ICDR regulations and figure out the definition of promoter group. Uh, usually it is uh, any other company which the promoter holds a substantial stake in. So, for example, if the promoter holds... 10% stake in any other company, that becomes part of the promoter group. Who all are part of the promoter group? In, in this case, FNB Singapore is the only other company that is part of the promoter group. Now, um, the next few chapters are some, are some chapters that we actually don't have to draft, but I'll still go over them just so that we know what goes in where. Now, the dividend policy of the company for any Indian company is determined by the directors, right? So in our case, we can leave it blank, but usually we'll put in a statement saying that um, it will be recommended by our board, as in the case of um, the Companies Act, and if approved by shareholders, it will be distributed, right? Whether the company has paid any dividend in the last uh, three years, um, in, in the last few years, needs to be disclosed as well. In this case, this company has not paid any dividend at all. All right. The next section concerns financial statements. Now, as I've mentioned before, we are not concerned with financial statements at all. The actual um, 
the actual financial statements are audited and made by the um, by the auditors to the company and they attach this as a standalone letter so i'm just going to skip all of this these are all the financials of burger king india limited which i'm going to skip again we are not concerned with any of this whatsoever We're still on financial statements. It's a fairly long chapter. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay, I think we're almost at the end. No. You're right. Um, other financial information, not really necessary for us. Capitalization statement, not necessary for us. Financial indebtedness. This is the only chapter in the uh, financial information section that is relevant to us as cap markets lawyers. Now, whether we've whether we've taken any credit facilities, whether we've taken any loans from any banks, um, that needs to be disclosed here in this particular or in this particular uh, format, right? So the category of borrowing, whether it's secured or unsecured, and the sanctioned amount, and how much we have actually drawn down from the from these from the sanctioned amount. The principal terms, these you will find. So when you're going through the charge documents of a company. You'll find um, the sanction letter, the loan, uh, the, uh, the loan agreement, as well as the security document. All of these will form part of the loan arrangement as such. So from there, you should be able to um, come out with the principal terms of the borrowings that have been availed by the company. So which will include interest, pre prepayment penalty, any uh, interest payable as penalty, for how long is this going to be available, Hang on, let me just delete this. Right. Uh, what is the security that we are that we are setting up? Please make sure that the security that has been mentioned in the charge document and the security document are one and the same. Under what terms should this loan be repaid? Any key covenants? Um, so, for example, most loan agreements, most banks will require that that the companies take prior approval of the lender of the bank before they do any merger, demerger, consolidation, reorganization scheme or arrangement or any compromise with creditors or shareholders, right? Um, affect any change in its capital structure. So when a company is going public, it is changing its capital structure, which means that this company will need to go to its banks for a no objection certificate. Um, usually banks are, you know, will give this no objection certificate given the fact that this company is going from a private unlisted company to a public listed company and therefore will be subject to a higher threshold of conduct, a higher standard of conduct, a higher standard of corporate governance, right? Um, what are the events of default? And all of this you'll come from, will come from the loan agreement, the sanction letter and the security document read together. Um, that's it. And that's the, that's all we need to do in terms of the financial indebtedness. Um, this is for each of the loans. You'll have to do this for each of the loans of the company. All right. Management discussion and analysis of financial condition and results of operations. This is otherwise known as the MDNA chapter. The MDNA chapter is nothing but an explanation of the financial statements of the company saying, why did we do so well in a particular year? Why did we not do so well in a particular year? Um, what is the financial condition of the company? Where do we expect the company to move forward for the next in the next few years? Uh, what are the factors that that apply to us in terms of profit, profitability, non profitability, so on and so forth? None of this is done by us as capital markets lawyers. This is all done by the merchant bankers and the auditors. So I'm going to go ahead and skip this bit. And I think that's it for this financial information section. And then we'll go into regulatory in a bit yeah there we go so that's it
that's it for this lecture. Uh, in the next lecture, number 24, we'll get into legal and other information.